Welcome to Box Big Wednesday, powered by New Balance. It's a final play, and look at the celebrations, look at how much it means to Northumbria. And that is full time here, and Nottingham reigns supreme. And will take it in for the second, love for a touchdown. White will head for the corner, but he won't need to get there, the referee blows the full time whistle. Good evening and welcome to Loughborough University. We are here for the Bucks Bigs Wednesday Netball Championship Final, which is being held between Loughborough University and Hartford University. A rematch of the 2017 final that was clinched by Loughborough. Both teams are stacked with Netball Super League players and Pathway players. I am joined in commentary by Mickey Austin, current head of Pathway Netball at Surrey Storm and player. Thanks for joining us, Mickey. Firstly, I'd like to discuss Loughborough having home advantage for this game. How significant is that? Yeah, probably really significant. There's a massive crowd building, lots of atmosphere. If, if you look into the crowd, there's loads of like cardboard boards that are going to be held up, cut out of players' faces. So I think they're certainly going to make sure that their home court advantage is heard. And I think that that counts for a lot, the psychology of that, um, the support when you're walking around your normal venue, your normal changing room. There's already been a bit of a debacle with the bibs as well. So, you know, we've seen that pre-game have to be ironed out and Loughborough as the home team. They'll feel more comfortable. So, you know, I think for them, they're going to be walking around going, you're going to have to work extremely hard to come into our backyard and try and get a result here. But, you know, Hearts, Hearts have got championship calendar. They've been in seven finals and only lost one of them. And that finals experience, I'm sure they're going to want to make pay today. Thanks. And Loughborough have a great pedigree of alumni who have represented their university or played for the Loughborough Lightning franchise. How significant is it that Loughborough have so many Super League or um, Pathway players in their squad? Yeah, look, I think if you look across both teams today, you're going to see an absolute wealth of talent, whether that's through Pathway or whether that's through Netball Super League clubs and a lot of different clubs represented at that. So I think that can only be a fantastic showcase for our sport. It's going to make for a great competitive game today. But I think it's also going to be incredibly important for these universities in terms of their bragging rights. You know, teams like Loughborough, institutions like Bath, you know, they take great pride in their heritage, the amount of history they have and the amount of trophies they can brag about. And Hearts are, are more that that team that goes under the radar a little bit. You know, when you think of your traditional powerhouse universities, they're probably not one you associate with that. They've got a really small netball program. They only have three teams, um, but they have five performance sports and they clearly invest in making sure that that is an incredibly streamlined process. And they would say it's working. You know, netball are in, in Big Bucks final. Foot all made it to Big Butts final today as well for Hertfordshire. So for them, they'll take a look at that and go in five performance sports. Two of them are in finals. We're doing a really good job. And they are really doing a great job. And it's incredible. I think that focus and that commitment that they're making. Um, so talking about Hertfordshire, Mel Mansfield, their coach. So since 2014, there's been 10 finals and she's been in seven of them. How significant is she? We also know that she coaches alongside you at Surrey Storm. So tell us a little bit more about Mel Mansfield. Yeah, hey, look, I'm probably going to be quite biased here and, and I don't mind it. Um, you know, when we talk about calibre of coaches in this country, Mel is probably about as good as it gets in terms of her knowledge, her experience. She's been in and around the game for a very, very long time. And I think that probably speaks volumes to her character and how well she's welcomed by players and other coaches alike. And also incredibly successful, you know, not just a great human being, but has a fantastic track record in terms of championships, whether that's with Wasps Netball. You know, she was with Storm back in in the day and we've managed to wrangle her back into our mix and you know she she's incredibly methodical she gives a lot of time a lot of commitment she's one of these coaches that 
often at two o'clock in the morning, me and her are, are wide awake exchanging messages on WhatsApp, sending pictures of the video that we're both sitting wide awake and watching. So she really does put her heart and soul into this team. I know this is a credibly and proud moment for her. Obviously been for a really tough time more recently, lost her mum incredibly recently. Um, so this means a lot to her and, and you know, to, to go through all of that in her private life and still be able to function, I think is a testament to her. So um, I'm, bi I'm biasedly probably edging towards Mel having a good time today. And just one more question on Mel and Hertfordshire. So they lost to look for a team in 2017. So how do those memories play out today? Yeah, look, I, th I think that's probably going to be one that stings. And if you look at this Loughborough lineup today, it doesn't get any easier, does it? You know, they have absolute talent to burn across their entire lineup. Jazz Brown, a goalkeeper who's had an outstanding five rounds for Stars so far. Uh, not starting today, but if they need to break glass in case of emergency, they have Mary Cholhock sitting on their bench. And that's not a bad trump card to be able to play as if they need it with an Emma Thacker and a Susie Liverstidge in their starting lineup. So I think hearts are under no illusion about how difficult today is going to be, but the pressure is off them and absolutely on a Loughborough side. Now, they have championship calibre. Mary was only in a Super League final in June. So that's going to live true in her memory. Um, and I think, you know, if I was looking at it non-biased, I think Loughborough should pip it today. I didn't even ask for your prediction, but we'll take it. Thank you so much. And it is hotting up in here, getting intense. But before it got so loud, I spoke to Mel Mansfield, the Hertfordshire coach. Here's take, let's take a look at what she told, talked to me about. Thanks for joining me, Mel Mansfield, coach of the University of Hertfordshire. You've had a little bit of a trip to get here to Loughborough. What does it mean when you're playing a team that have home advantage? Yeah, it's just a bit unfortunate, isn't it? But compared to the Bucks away games we play this season, this is just down the road. Um, everything we do is a big travel and a whole day. So we're the only team in the south, actually, that are kind of stuck out on our own. So we're used to Exeter, Bath, two Cardiffs, Bristol. So it actually wasn't too bad. So hopefully it's not going to impact play today. You have been a really successful coach. So seven out of ten finals in Bucks that you've made since 2014. How do you keep it going so well? Well, I think there's a good team behind the team at Hearts and we only, we're a smaller sporting university and we know that. So netball is one of the five performance sports that we focus on and we've just been hugely successful. We work really hard to recruit and we have to and then success breeds success. And so year upon year, um, we, we work hard to recruit players from year 11, 12. We're looking all the time and um, master students and, and imports as well. So we work really hard to make the programme really good. It's really exemplary, so well done for that. I don't know that the game isn't starting yet and you might not necessarily want to give us away some tactics, but what's the game plan for today? Well, they've got a really strong team and um, we don't get to see them at all um, because they play in Prem North, but we've seen some footage and obviously a lot of those players are very well known. So um, we've done some work on some of those individual players, but what we don't know, of course, is how much court time they're going to get and, and in what combina combination. They've got extremely good ends and mid-court. It's going to be tough. We know that. Um, so all we've done is try and keep our error count really low, try to counteract some big shooters because whoever's on there, they've got a target, which is always difficult. So through court defence is going to be crucial. But I've got some magical players out here too. So we, we know we're going into this on paper as underdogs, uh, player for player. We likely are to be kind of thought of the team that's going to struggle today. But my team are really gritty. They're heart students and they never lie down. So And we've had some really good prep in preparation for this final with some difficult quarter and semi-finals and some big travels the entire season. So this isn't a team that's ready to... Come here and roll over today and you mentioned some magical players could you tell us a couple of your players who we should look out for well we've obviously got the lovely Hanisha Mohammed who uh, I get to work with double time and she's talented both ends of the court so not a lot of people have seen her shoot but she's pretty de uh, deadly um, and then I've got players such as Jada uh, who's playing in a pulse training partner role she's pretty special Aliyah Zaranika we've got some ball winners uh, the trouble is they all want to win the ball at the same time so we have to be a little bit controlled about what we do and then we've got to mention Yaz Hodgingland who has been player coach for the first team for the last two seasons and she's absolutely having a killer season so her, her shooting is deadly and she's so calm and just got the experience that this group need that they all trust her so um, they're a nice group um, they're gritty they're dogged and uh, they're up for it thanks Mel show us some great good luck for the game yeah, thank you. 
You are with us here at Loughborough University Netball Centre where Hertfordshire Mavericks are taking on the home side. Loughborough, University of Hertfordshire are taking on the home side. Loughborough University. It is hotting up in here as the teams are called out. So just going through the Loughborough lineup: Emma Thacker, goal shooter. Susie Leversedge, goal attack. Wing attack, Georgie Brooke-Taylor. Bella Bayliss starting at centre. Saffron Collymore Lewis at wing defence. Alex Johnson, goal defence. And Jazz Brown at goalkeeper. Reserves, Megan Allen, Mary Cholhock, Sophie Eggbaron, Catherine Fisher and Lydia Harrison and coach Josie Poynton leading the team. And for the University of Hertfordshire today, starting from the top down, we have Yaz Hodge England at goal shooter, Libby Burgess at goal attack, Ellie Oswick at wing attack, Lola Stevens in the middle at centre, Jada Autumn at wing defence, Eliza Barkley captain at goal defence and Hanisha Mohamed getting the start in goalkeeper. On the bench for Hertfordshire, we have Ella Courtney, Pippa Dixon, Tilly Irvine, Vichelle Robinson and Aliyah Zaranika. Head coach is Mel Mansfield and today is going to be a cracker. So strap yourself in, everybody. There's already been all sorts in the build-up. There's been Bibgate. We'll get to that later. <laughs> we I don't will. know if it's too early yet, Emma. It's too soon. It's, it's too, too soon. soon. We still can't talk about it. But if, if, if you're struggling to distinguish between the two dresses already... There, there has been a little controversy around... Well, the, the teams have been sent to their benches, the so let's talk teams. about it. Yeah, so well, essentially what happened, Loughborough, their home colour is African violet, and University of Hertfordshire, they also play in purple. So there were little disputes around the, the dresses and whether there was enough difference for the players to be able to differentiate themselves and for the umpires to see. So... Tell us a little bit more about what happened with the big bib gate. Well, fr from what I understand, and I must confess, I was just trying to fill up my water <laughs> bottle when I got caught in the middle just of this. Just hydrating. I was just trying to hydrate. Um, there, there, there were some emails exchanged a couple of weeks ago to try and align what colours people were wearing. It was agreed on principle a couple of weeks ago what colours was going to be worn. And then when we've turned up today, uh, I think Hearts were probably a bit surprised about the colours that they they then saw on the other side. So there, there was a big question around, are we going to wear overhead bibs? And if we do, who's going to do that? Because no one wanted to back down. There, there's a big discussion going on about it currently, as you can see, head coach of, of Hearts, Mel Mansfield, is, 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 I think, probably trying to fight her case a little bit. Um, but the, 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 the bibs are quite similar. So I, I, the, we, the dresses. The dresses, the dresses, sorry. So we predicted earlier there was going to be at least three passes that go to the wrong team. <laughs> we I know, did. I know certainly if I, if I was on that court, I, I would probably struggle. But maybe it'll be different when they get into motion. We can, uh, we can only live in hope, can't we? Although I, I'm surprised that this is still going on now because there was a discussion ahead of the game where the umpires looked at the bibs, looked at the dresses and players standing side by side. And we thought that they had resolved the issue. So I'm not sure whether this is still the same issue but we will get back to you soon to let you know what's happening but players at the moment still just going through their warm-up and still trying to stay focused it's really difficult I think to come into um, a game like this and have this impact um, but if anyone was watching the um, the football and um, the women's super league over the weekend there was an issue with Arsenal and Chelsea and their socks and a clash of socks so there was a delay in that game too so box university sports but running it out with the elite. We're still We're delaying anyway. Okay. Why is there reason? So the delay is still ongoing and it is about that kick clash. So we did see several discussions occurring prior to the game happening when the players were warming up, when the teams were warming up. They all, um, the captains approached the benches and the umpires, all three umpires, um, Joe Paddock, Emma Parker and the reserve umpire, Emma Walker, all assessing what they thought about the the bib they had and the, two the dress side by side, didn't they? Exactly, and that bib clash. And we thought it had been resolved because there was some discussion, and then both captains walked away to their respective benches, and we thought, okay, it's been sorted. Apparently not, so the game will be slightly delayed. But let's talk about the impact that that has on players, Mickey. So it's already there's tension. It's a final. It's big. 
you've traveled or you haven't traveled, but you've spent the whole day trying to prepare. How does this impact the teams? Yeah, look, I, I think it's really tough. It's tough at this stage when you've already gone through that, that pre-match warm-up. You know, you've already got yourself psychologically ready. You've already got yourself mentally ready. You know, everything is, is where it needs to be in terms of you being optimum level. You know, they've had their run out. They had the moment through the pyrotechnics. Everything was like, you know, if I'm them, I'm like up Fired and about. Up, you are absolutely there. You just to want go. to get your hand on the ball. You just want to get that that feeling in the pit of your stomach out of the way. So to then have to almost come all the way back down again, a bit like letting the air out of a balloon, isn't it? And it, as you say, it's, it, it's just a shame because, you know, this was openly discussed at the beginning of their warm-up. And I mean, we've been here a long time. The teams have also been here a yeah. very long time. You know, that some the Hertfordshire was in the crowd at sort of three o'clock. So, it, it, you know, it's a shame that it, it couldn't have been ironed out before. But hey, I, a lot of these athletes on the court playing Super League, you know, are on that cusp of elite, semi-professional, professionalisation. They have to take this in their stride. This is all part and parcel of being that elite level athlete where sometimes you just get a challenge dealt to you and you have to roll with the punches. So how mentally resilient are you to not let this have an impact on what you're about to go out there and, and, and put on show? Exactly. And talking about that mental res resilience, it's quite difficult sometimes to replicate some of the experiences that you're going to come up against. So I imagine lots of these players will, will not have come up to a game where they have a delay around their dresses and their bibs. So how exactly can, what can they do? So obviously we can see the look of shooters here shooting, but because you don't know, and I think that's the thing. So you can deal with a delay if you know how long it's going to be. What do they do when they just don't know what's happening? I mean, just put on overhead bibs at this point. Is that not what you just do? Um, you know, that, I think that's probably where I would be. Like, let's just get the game underway. I want to play. I want to play more than I, I don't want to stand here waiting. Um, but look, I think it's just about making sure you keep your legs moving. You know, you have those individual check-ins if you need it. You know, for me, I'm a midi, so I'd be going to find one of my mid-court partners or maybe my shooters, trying to put an extra few feeds in just to keep that, you know, mind, muscle, memory ticking over. You know, both, both teams seem pretty jovial. You know, there's, there's a lot of smiles in that Hertfordshire group currently. And the overhead bibs are coming out. Everybody, they are in the Loughborough huddle. They are. But earlier I spoke to Josie Poynton, the Loughborough coach. So here's what she had to say. Thanks for joining me, Josie Poynton, the University of Loughborough coach. Could you tell us a little bit about the fact that you have home advantage in this match today? Yeah, it's an absolutely amazing that Loughborough's hosting Big Spucks Wednesday. Um, the girls absolutely love playing here at the Netball Centre as well. We've got a good crowd coming down and, yeah, really excited to be playing on what essentially is their home court. And in your semi-final against Bath, you won by 10, but potentially not the start you wanted. Yeah, you know, Bath were an absolutely fantastic side. We knew it was going to be a tough game. They came out hard out the blocks. Um, we ended up actually being down by seven, I think, um, after the first quarter. And the girls in particular, they adapted. They went out, they turned over ball. We executed and came away with a, a really quality win against a great side. And do you think that's going to stand you in good stead today or are you hoping to dominate from the outset? I think in particular we've had lots of experiences this year. We've had a couple of games where we have been down and we've had to you know, really grind it out and then come away with a win. We've also had games where we've been able to lead for all four quarters and control the game. So I think for us, yes, of course, we want to control the game for four quarters. But in particular, we know we've got experience in our locker that we can draw upon as well. And you talk about experience, you've got a number of Super League players in your team and pathway players. How do you manage to pull those together because they are from different franchises? Yeah, you know, we have uh, players that are across three different franchises. We then also have pathway players. You know, in particular, the girls, they, the, the beauty of that is we've got some quality players that... OK, and just cutting that interview short because the drama has ended Loughborough now in <laughs> yellow over bibs but the game is underway <laughs> so Bella Baylitz getting us off for Loughborough straight away Jada Autumn in and around the carnage of the circle edge making her presence felt I went to um I went to Hertfordshire to watch their semi-final a few weeks back against Leeds and and Jada Autumn for me would have been one of the standout players she she was just dogged she was getting her hand in and around ball. It's a good contest from Hanisha. Mohamed there, unfortunate. And Emma Facker sinks the first goal of the final. She does. I'm excited for the um, Eliza Barkley, Hanisha Mohamed combination because I've seen them work previously and I think they combine really well. So looking forward to what they bring in this game.
lots of footwork from Jazz Brown early. She's so active for somebody who's also incredibly tall. She works her feet incredibly well to get round the body, but Yaz Hodge England says absolutely no problem. I will slot the first one from distance as well. That's going to be confidence building. It is, and Jazz Brown, I know, has done a lot of work in the off-season around her footwork. Eliza Barkley getting a hand in there, disrupting that feed into the circle. Dropping off, so not necessarily on a three-foot mark. Um, six foot back, not necessarily directly on a player, but making an impact just as much. And I think that's the way that you're going to have to play this shooting circle in particular. You know, two, two complete threats in, in a Susie Liverstead who, who plays for seven stars this, this season and an Emma Thacker who, who is, is now for Saracens Mavericks. So there's a lot of firepower in that shooting circle. But as we say that, a fantastic move by Hearts. Great ball speed and it frees up a, a Liberty Burgess underneath the post and she scored. I'm very happy about that. <laughs> Why are you so happy? I don't know. I might like her a little bit. <laughs> I think it is exciting. There are so many key, brilliant players, some of them emerging, but also some who are playing in the Netball Super League. Unlucky, unlucky there from Jade Autumn. It was a good contest and the, and the ball was going out of court anyway, so probably could have pulled out of that a bit, but she wanted to let Brock Taylor know that she was there. She did. I, was, I paused because I was a little concerned about Brock Taylor, so still clutching at her knee and her ankle. Um, able to continue at the moment but we'll keep an eye on how she goes great rebound position from Hanisha Mohamed there and you hear a really big scream that's where a lot of their confidence is going to have to come from this hearts team the opportunities that they get off turnover ball but they have to make it pay and Saffron Collymore Lewis they're feeling a little bit hard done by underneath that contest ex-Storm pathway athlete. I know her well. She's worked incredibly hard on, on providing a second option as a mid-quarter. Oh, brilliant reverse hand there from Jazz Brown. I was thinking she's in a really good position. Oh, and Jada Autumn reading play just as well. So it's going to be a tight contest and battle. I think both teams defensively hungry for the ball and reading play really well. And that's what this Hearts team do incredibly well. You know, if they turn over ball, they're looking to hunt it early and up the court. You know, that's not going to be the first time that you see a, a, see a Jada Autumn trying to win this interception turnover and her team. But as we say that, a great rebound from Jazz. Where do you think the, the gate, the play is going to be won? Is it in the mid court? Because both teams we've said defensively are all amazing not just in the defense end but across the board so where will the game be won and lost i think definitely inside the shooting circles you know that that defensive tactical battle of how the circles are going to adapt you know it, it is incredibly important it's, you know it's a final there's a lot on the line but your know, nerves were going to be high regardless let alone the disruption to the start you know as we spoke about before so i think that's also going to be a factor in this so it, it's going to be about the teams that settle the easiest you know both of them have got an incredibly speedy mid court where they're going to look to use that ball speed through the middle like this to make progress drive at the other team but then how can you change that pace the minute you enter your attacking third to go slow change the timing craft an opportunity or potentially look to draw a penalty and earlier when I was talking to Mel, Man Mel Mansfield, the University of Hertfordshire coach, she talked about the fact that they play in the South um, League and so they don't necessarily meet Loughborough throughout the season. So they've looked at footage, but how challenging is it to play against a team that you've not met previously in the season? Yeah, it is really challenging, but I think one thing that's got progressively better for, for the Bucks Premier Ship League year on year, oh, and Jazz <laughs> Brown's probably going to feel very hard done by that there wasn't a contact there, and I don't usually agree with defenders, <laughs> but I might agree with her on that one. She did exceptionally well to get that rebound and keep it in court, but unfortunately... Hey, all's fair in love and netball when you plan the <laughs> final, right? And Yaz Hodge England will be saying, do you know what? This is what I'm going to try and do all game. I might miss, but I'm going to work hard to get the rebound and I'm going to, I'm going to keep turning and going to post. But as I was saying before, the competitiveness of, of, this, of the Premier League, North and South, has year on year vastly improved. So, you know, there are multiple tight games 
year on year. So even though they won't have come up against this Loughborough side, you know, they are competing against Premier sides within their league, Exeter, Cardiff, etc., etc., that are going nip and tuck goal for goal. Likewise with Loughborough, they're coming up against a league Beckett side. Um, you know, Bath as well, the Southern team that we haven't even spoke about that didn't make the final, that will be gutted to lose out to Loughborough Lightning in the semi. So, you know, I don't think it will bother them too much that they haven't faced this particular Loughborough side. They know these players well enough. And Emma Facker there with Loughborough's third goal. Great Beautiful take, take from yeah. Lola Stevens. Lovely take. Fully outstretched, which is where t coaches want players to place the ball. Put it as far enough in front of the, your opponent so that they can't interfere with the ball. And you, you need to against the range of this defensive circle. You know, Alex Johnson, Jazz Brown are, are so big and rangy and, and very clearly Jazz Brown is right up for the contest she today. She took that is. contact personally. She did. And she the amount she celebrated just then and winning that attacking contact. Very rare attacking contacts, but the whole team lifted. And they're patiently working this ball through court. The attack a little bit disjointed. Oh, beautiful drive from Emma Thacker there. Came out to help out, was high up in the court and unassumingly drove through the baits with no attention from Hanisha Mohammed or Eliza Barkley. Yeah, really great vision there. And well held Emma Thacker just tiptoeing along that baseline. But again, great contest from Hanisha Mohammed. She'll probably feel a little bit hard done by. Very edgy to start this game, six minutes in, isn't it? It really is. I like how the Loughborough mid-quarters are being patient, not forcing that feed in. They understand that the shooters have to do a bit of work to shift the defenders, so not, in, not letting that ball go immediately. Really significant. Great connection there between Jada Autumn and Lola Stevens. This is where both teams seem to be getting a little bit stuck at the moment, doesn't it? Not really finding clear one-on-one -on -one lines into the circle. And as I say, that Lola, Lola Stevens proves me wrong. That's a nice settle up for Libby Burgess. You know, Hearts over the last three or four minutes haven't struggled getting the ball into their shooting circle, but have struggled to convert from that point on. So I think for them, they've got to take confidence of the mini battles that at the moment they are winning. Constantly making sure that they're, they're getting ball side on this Loughborough attack end so that Hopefully, they can manage to stay in play, just like Hanisha Mohammed did there. Love that one. It was beautiful. She read it so well. I think working well together with Eliza Barkley, forcing the Loughborough shooters tight in to the ball and then winning the ball in that back space. And that's much better from Lola Stevens there. You could see them really crafting the swings to open up that defensive circle, get the heads turning. And that's Completely. exactly what this Hearts team are going to need to do. Move the ball, but with purpose. Completely. And Eliza Barkley there just caught a bit flat. And as you say, heads turning. Her head was turning. She wasn't sure. Actually, I think she was looking for Jazz Brown as opposed to looking for um, the Hertfordshire team. So when you've lost your, your teammate and your defender, you just have to do your own job. So let, let your teammate go, do your own job, ensure the ball doesn't get freely to that post. And that is a big shot from Yaz Hodge England. I know, I know her well. She spent a little bit of time. Oh, Jada Orton, stop me in my sentence. Spent a little bit of time at Surrey Storm a few years ago, did Yaz. She was a player alongside myself back in the and day when I was just go. a player. I was just a player. I was going to say, you let her go because she just, is shining. She's having an incredible just, season but one thing and you Yaz, let her go. One thing Yaz does incredibly well <laughs> is turn and shoot the lights out. She's always going to have confidence to go to post. Actually a player coach for this Hertfordshire side as well. So we could chat a lot probably <laughs> about the, uh, the mental struggles that happen when you are player coach, hey? I've been a player coach myself. It is a, it's a challenge. I think sometimes you Don't play you play the game differently as a player. You read the game differently. You uh, interact within your unit. I used to sometimes get halfway through a quarter and then realise I'm the coach as well and I need to input during the breaks. How, how do you find that? Yeah, I mean, I think that's why there's such a big emphasis on me, on my support system and why made such a conscious effort over the five years that I've been doing this job into building that support system around me of people who are incredibly skilled. You know, people like Mel Mansfield, Bianca Modest that we have within our unit this year, you know, they, they give me strength and they enable me to be able to mentally just focus on my job on the court. I think because of my role as a centre, I don't get time to coach and I don't get time to breathe and I don't <laughs> yeah. get time to think. It's your own fault for choosing centre. I know, I there know. were seven positions for you to choose. It chose me. 
you know, that, that life chose me as Eliza Barkley, captain of this heart side, comes out with a great interception, which is banked up by Hanisha Mohammed. And that interception came from the work that that defensive four did. So the setup brilliant, and it was basically either any one of the four could have run to get the interception. Eliza Barkley putting herself on the line to be the one. Again, there's, there's a lot of turnover opportunity for this Haas defensive line. It's just whether they can convert it. There's lots of pressure on the shot from Alex Johnson and a bit of a fumble there from Liberty Burgess. I, I don't know if that was a fumble or a, sh or a shot or whether it was tipped. Or I just think it was lack of confidence. Whatever it, it turned out to be, whether she thought to shoot and then saw a pass, but it was just potentially from the... It was daunting what the defenders were... The pressure the defenders were putting her under. And Jada Autumn is everywhere. She is... She's electric. Yeah, London Pulse athlete is Jada Autumn. Training partner for them this year. So within their 15 and just waiting for opportunity to get some court timers. Hanisha Mohamed <laughs> turns over another one. Yeah, and London Pulse have a really good pathway. They've had a good pathway for a number of years. And so imagine having some incredible talent like Jada Autumn who can't make it into your Super League team. But hopefully for Jada, at some point in the near future, that will happen, be at London Pulse or another franchise. Also also getting regular minutes for an academy, Netball side as well. So the shout out to our Prem clubs as well. We're working incredibly hard alongside Super League and Bucks to, to constantly develop these athletes that are on the cusp of that Super League squad, but, but maybe not made it just yet. Bella Bayliss. Amazing, she flew. Beautifully. Jada Autumn reading the play, potentially slightly late on that one, but... Yeah, Georgie Pock taylor did not appreciate the hand trying to get helped up off the floor, did she? But hey, look, you know, first quarter, edgy, low scoring, 6-8 is the quarter score, could you believe it? It's the been hard work. We've got. It's been hard work. And actually, there have been lots of opportunities, but um, shooting percentage not as high as the teams would have liked. But we said it was going to be exciting, we said it would be intense, and it's promising... It's delivering what it promised. Yeah, definitely. And some really high skill as well. You know, that's that's, that's a really fantastic intercept from, Fe from Bella Bayliss. But at what point are these Hertfordshire middies going to start giving and cutting rather than lingering in the backspace for these defenders who are clearly rangy and, and looking to run on the pockets? And I think the angles that the um, the Hertfordshire team are passing on, it's, it's very wide angles, so easy to read and tip and intercept. So that will need to change. Yeah, and you know, just like that, Hearts go from being two up to now an opportunity to be one down with just over 90 seconds to go, courtesy of Emma Thacker and a long bomb. Completely, and just that confidence creeping into the Loughborough game. That's the good danger of being at home, isn't it? Home, home court advantage, crowd gets up and about, everybody starts standing up and the tambourines get shooken a bit harder. And the drums banging. Gosh, the drums. <laughs> the drums. I'm not a fan. <laughs> I'm not a fan. But when you're on court, you're so focused and tuned in. Facts. Do you hear? No. I was actually having this conversation yesterday, doing a player IPP, actually, and we was talking about, you know, whether you're insular when you play or, or, or not. And I'm so... I couldn't hear a thing. Couldn't even tell you what the venture's saying. I'm, I'm just so internal. But I'm sure these guys are completely wired and locked into the atmosphere here. Good, oh, great read. Great read, and that's why we tell players when you get the ball, turn, and then the defender has to back off. If you catch the ball and you're basically directing where you're going to throw it, it's easy for defenders to read and make an impact. Jada it, Awesome. There's probably a lot of calls in there that, from my perspective up here, looked like it probably could have been a penalty. But no, Jazz Brown says, my ball, please. You all can, can just wait for me to get the interception. Emma Thacker trying desperately to keep that ball in for Loughborough. Nine goals apiece with just 17 seconds on the clock now. So are Hertfordshire able to take this ball through to their attack? And plenty of time, but Eliza Bott, Alex Johnson, not happy. Just one second now, Loughborough unable to take that to a goal. But as you said, Mickey, a very incredibly low scoring quarter just nine goals for each team the ball has been played up and down a lot some missed shots in the circle but 
how do you summarise that quarter? Yeah, look, uh, we said at the beginning of this game it was going to be a real tactical battle, particularly for the, the defensive circles, and that's exactly what we've seen played out. You know, both teams have got great ball speed, happy to deliver the ball really, really confidently on the first and the third second. We've got middies that match each other incredibly well for speed and pace, but it's about that control factor when the ball is in and around the circle edge. You know, both defensive units are getting hands to a lot of ball. There's a lot of tips, nothing's really clean. That means shooters, when they're taking the ball, there's always a contest. Everything is uncomfortable. And then you have to turn and try and shoot. So it's not surprising why we're seeing quite a few missed shots, rebound opportunities, because all of that is wearing and we're only 15 minutes in. So if that continues for the next 45, by the time we get into minute 50 to 55, and this is a goal for goal game, that's when we're going to see that relentless dogged defence pay dividends. So from a defensive perspective, it's been absolutely beautiful for both teams. Attack lines do need to clean it up though. Perfect. We will just take a quick break and we will join you in the second quarter. But for now, it is Loughborough University 9, University of Hertfordshire 9. Thanks for being with us at Bucks Big Wednesday, the Netball Championship Final, powered by New Balance. You're here with Loughborough University and University of Hertfordshire. It's nine goals apiece. Mickey, what do you think? I think great contest, close contest, which is exactly what we wanted. I think that the Hertfordshire defensive line in particular, Jada Autumn, Hanisha Mohamed, have been outstanding to start the quarter. And quite frankly, they've, they've probably kept hearts in it largely. And that's why the, the, the score is level. I think the shooting circle needs to be more pragmatic with the way they're going about their business. They're trying to use a lot of body, but they're still allowing the Loughborough defenders to get around them. So if you're going to be strong enough to use your body, you've actually got to physically hold the defender off. And if not, and they're getting down, you've got to offer us a second movement out of it. But how difficult is it to have that physicality on the body and also communicate with your mid-quarters so that they know where you need to put the ball? Well, yeah, I mean, it is difficult, but then that's your job. Like, you're literally wearing the bib that requires you to do that job. So, like, and sometimes you do have to be that quite hard and fast about it, you know. If we look at the shooting stats for this Hertfordshire team, we've got both of them even, Stephen, six, six out of six for Burgess, three out of five for Yaz If you look at the other end, Emma Thacker's had 12 shots and scored eight. It's probably not something that we, we would expect. So, from a Loughborough perspective, they will be saying, we're in a good place, we're getting enough opportunities, and we've got to trust that the goals will come. So if I was their coach, if I was Josie, I'd probably be quite positive at this stage. Completely. And Lola Stevens will get us off for the second quarter. Who will take this quarter? Tied. Tied in the first quarter. Umpire's just moving a photographer. It's always a media guy that wants to take a photo <laughs> behind the post. Such is the pedigree of these players that they are in demand in terms of Ben Lumley, I'm giving you a shout out here because you love to do this at, at NSL, but you get the umpires inside. So this guy clearly needs to take a lesson off he of does. you. He does. There's actually three photographers <laughs> down the there, space. which is great. But finally, Lola Stevens can get this Hotfordshire side off for the second quarter. And we talked about what the Hotfordshire team need to do in terms of building the ball into opportunities for their attack end. Yeah, no changes for either team, so that, that's probably really reflective of, of the tactical nature of what Coach Josie and Coach Mel are trying to outmatch each other at the moment, clearly thinking that they can give some instruction to the players out on court and they can go and do a job. 
see a much more measured approach here from the Hearts attack. And it, they did this in the first quarter quite a lot. You see Yaz Hodge England really trying to body to the edge of the circle and, and ask for that drop on the floor just to try and draw a penalty. Yeah. Which down this end ha has worked so far. And I think it is just that trying to protect the ball. So with a rangy defence with Jazz Brown and Alex Johnson, it's actually great to keep the ball flat and keep it low and just play safety. Yeah, look, the reality is when they've got the height against you, you can't back yourself on going over, holding. Unless all of you're the time. holding, and I think sometimes that's what shooters don't do enough of. They don't hold long enough because you don't need to be tall. The defenders can be taller than you. If you hold well and in the correct position, you can get the ball at the back. But I think at the moment, because of that physicality on the body, the Hartfordshire shooters still struggling a little bit under that pressure and the, of the contest on the body before they receive the ball. Fantastic fake second phase from Liberty Burgess there and a beautiful change from Ellie Oswick. And that's what they've got to do more. You know, these, these Loughborough defenders are dogged. They want to be on your shoulder and run hard at the flat ball, in which case you've got to be smarter about going and changing direction on them. And within a flash, Loughborough able to speed through the court. Good take, Emma Thacker there, sandwiched in between two defenders. No problem for her, though. And Loughborough with the opportunity to double up on their score. So consecutive goals is what we want to, to build that score difference. Really good centre pass defence here from this Hertfordshire side. You can see them almost playing a bit of a diamond defence. And Eliza Barkley there almost gets her hand to that one. Discipline on the shot. Only one shot. Emma, why is that so important? You're well, totally a defender. Yeah, you're given the opportunity for the shooters to have another second chance at goal. Also, they'll, they get the time to compose themselves. So I'm going to call it now. Alex Johnson's going to get a hand to one of those. First phase running hard on the shoulder of Libby Burgess. She's done that every single passage of play for the entirety of the first quarter and been fingertips away, fingertips away. It is really intense. There is lots of physicality on the court. I'm actually quite frustrated with these bounce passes. I know you mid-quarters like them. Oh, a brilliant, brilliantly read passage of play from Eliza Barkley there. Clean interception, reading the play. So she had her player on her back, did the job on her own player, and able to then just read and cut through the centre of that circle to that clean intercept at the top. I mean... Obstruction offside, one or the other, has probably has to be. But great great split circle defence at the moment from, from Alex Johnson and Jazz Brown, which is forcing that short pass call. You know, they're, they're not following their own player. They're staying sides inside the circle and essentially allowing the, the Hertfordshire shooters to just churn around them. You know, and, and when you're big, when you're rangy, you've got great arm span and you trust each other in that solidified defensive partnership, that's going to be used to a great advantage for them. Completely, and the Hertfordshire attackers need to work together. So what you need to do in that situation is overload one defender. So you can't just rotate round because you switch defenders and they're doing very little movement. You need to overload one defender so they have to make a decision whether they go left or go right or go forward or back. And then someone becomes open, available for the ball. Yeah, but all that work for very little gain because that was off of a Loughborough centre pass. So, you know, we talk about momentum swings and owning the momentum in the game. It's really difficult when you're working your guts out as a defender to turn the ball over and then you go oh why is the ball coming straight back at me and it's because it was off of our own centre so have to reward the ball that we're getting just like Libby Burgess did there so that when you get turnover opportunity you can start making inroads on the scoreboard beautiful great feed release. Bella Bayliss love that as a centre amazing great release she only has eyes for the post so her first option when she catches the ball even in the center third and deep in the center third she looks first to emma thacker who struggles to keep that ball in play georgie brooke taylor was <laughs> trying to play bella bayes at her own game there but but and that's it isn't it it's knowing the moments where you can do that if you've just gone long on one passage of play as an attacker what do you think the defenders are going to think you're going to do on the next one well they're going to be watching out for that long ball correct in which case they're going to be sunk deeper so now what you have to do is go short and sharp short and sharp and it's that constant cat and mouse game of stretching the structure apart and then pull it closer together again completely and actually that long ball was delivered off uh, an, inter an interception and so actually how difficult is it after an interception to control the play well, we've just seen it there a live example it's as if they can hear you Emma <laughs> you know Hertfordshire do that great defensive work then the ball goes down the other end and Alex Johnson runs along that bounce pass that's been happening around the circle edge for the last quarter and four minutes 
you know? And that's the thing, it keeps happening, and that's what you're mentioning. So doing the same things repeatedly and not changing, how frustrating is that as a coach? Well, I, th I think what you're looking for is, for is for thinking players. So are you just throwing and catching? Or are you assessing what the opponent is doing to you every phase of play? Because this is what you need to be thinking about. You know, this is what my opponent is trying to combat. What am I going to be doing? Lucky penalty call there. It was. And after Yaz Hoz England delivered a beautiful shooter shooter pass to Livy Burgess, she gets the penalty. So a second opportunity to put that ball away. Nice reset, good control, tiptoed on that line. Good Alex control, Thompson. however, all three Loughborough players, the wing attack centre and the goal attack, all came up high and level in a line. So good to use the back space, but then we need some players punching to get some depth, creating that space for the other players to come back on it. Safi Collymore Lewis and Ellie Oswick having a right old battle inside that circle with a footwork call on Yas Hodge England is Gives Luff for the opportunity. Put another one on the scoreboard, currently leading this quarter by two. Narrow margins in this game, that might just be enough. And Emma Thacker on that occasion turning to get Anisha Mohammed off her back and then drawing forward and dropping back into the back space on the baseline to receive a ball uncontested. And that's the difference, right? You know, you, you play for the short body, unlucky fumble from Lola Stevens, she'll be gutted with that one. But you know, you play for the body on the shore and then if the defender covers it, you give me another movement. You don't just stay there and go, oh, well, I'm, I'm covered. You know, there's three seconds in netball, so you have to essentially give me three different movements. And it doesn't matter how hard it is, that's just what you have to do. Uh, particularly when the caliber of athlete on this court is as high as it is. But neither team comfortable at the moment, neither team settling in their flow. And, and you know, prob probably a, an uglier standard of netball in this quarter <laughs> than there was to start the game, which considering the delay at the start is probably quite surprising. Yeah, very surprising. And you mentioned about that is just what you have to do in your position. But I think sometimes when you have played a team that you've comfortably won in your previous round, that does creep into in, into this game. So Loughborough beat Bath in their semi-final by 10 goals. They did have a tentative start, but 10 goals is still a significant amount. And so to go goal for goal against a team and body on body is quite a challenge much better set up in the Hertfordshire attack line there. You saw Yaz Hodge England look to use the short, get Alex Johnson to come and cover it and then have the sense of mind to then use the wide and open the court. But look, court score is 8-5 at the moment. So you see real bravery from Mel Mansfield here, pulling a change early doors. We see Ella Courtney coming onto the court in that centre position. We see Lola Stevens moving to that wing attack position and Ellie Oswick taking a nice earned break on the bench. Big hand slap from Hanisha Mohammed there. She gets the contact from Emma Thacker. She's feeling up and about today. Must have had a good training session last night. An incredibly well-read play there from Lucy, Susie Liversidge. Loughborough goal attack. feel like it's that there, you know, both teams are trying to move the ball incredibly quickly because of the defensive pressure, but the execution, because they're trying to move it a little bit too quick, is just a tiny bit off. And the umpire just not happy with contact. I think the, I, I, I would probably like to, to clarify there because I'm sure that was a caution I think it was, signal, but, but she's <laughs> just come on and I think she was saying to clean it up, but the player has just taken to the court. So I guess frustrating as a new player on court because you're almost like, well, I've just come on court. I want to make an impact. And I didn't necessarily see anything that was too... Shot. Big shot from Emma Thacker. Great take along that baseline. She's been tiptoeing with that a couple of times in the last minute or so. And I think instruction-wise, as a coach, you, you would definitely be telling her to give herself more room away from that baseline. This heart's attack end at the minute is just in all sorts of trouble. 
Got Loughborough defenders who are just filling space at the moment, making themselves look incredibly big, causing loads of chaos with the decision making. And the only thing at the minute that is keeping this Hearts team in the game is that lady there, Hanisha Mohamed. And Eliza Barkley inside the circle having a real captain's performance. Good placement on that feed to Hanisha Mohamed, able to take it cleanly under the watchful eye of Emma Thacker. And just the patience that the Hartfisher team are having to use to work this ball around in this defence end. But well, you want the team to be patient. You don't want them to throw the ball away. So have the patience, work the ball around, open up those spaces. And as you can see, they eventually appear. You also want to be smart enough with your body like that, that, that you pull a penalty. You know, as I said before, if, if you're going to be in there and you're going to be using your body, then it has to be for a purpose, either to be available for the ball or to make the umpire make a decision. You know, you can't just be in there using the body and, and not do either of those, because otherwise you're, you're going to get found out. And unfortunately, that's been the situation for this Hearts attack end at times. But penalty situation here where goal defence is out of play, so it'll be interesting to see what setup they do. Very lucky. Here, foot on that ball placement there. That's a great hold. Beautiful placement on the ball there. You can see that Ella Courtney really, really waited until the third second, almost fourth second, to, to ensure that the complete front of that shooter was open to the ball. And that's what they've got to do better. And for as scrappy as this game's been, there's only three in it completely and I think just there a great drive from Bella Bailey's look for centre drew uh, two defenders through to the pocket which opened it up really nicely for Georgie Brock Taylor so just working well in terms of rotating creating space for each other well done on holding that Lola Stevens. I was nervous when I saw a centre change coming for Hertfordshire because Lola Stevens has made a significant impact in this game she's fed the ball really well defensively she's been really strong so I'm glad that she remained on the court and moved to that wing attack position. Yeah, and to finish off this quarter, you see Loughborough really putting in a big push here. Lead out to six now. Nice split there from Emma Thacker, and confidently turns to the post. Yeah, she's had a much, much more settled quarter towards the last stages of this. They've placed the ball to her better though, you know, not fo forcing the ball off the baseline. Waiting until she really finds that angle. She just gave a big funds up there in the back of play to Mary Cholhock, who's sitting on the bench, should Loughborough need them. Yeah, and how does it feel in terms of that pressure of having an international superstar on, on the bench whilst you're playing in the same position as them? I mean, what do you do? What, honestly, like, what do you do at that point? I guess you, you, you just have to deal with, with, what, you can. with what you can at yeah. that moment in time. And, you know... It's that age-old story of, you know, one person doesn't make a team. So, and to be fair to the Hearts defensive line, you know, Jada Autumn, Eliza Barkley out the front of Hanisha Mohamed have been working tirelessly to create turnover before it even gets to the shooting circle. So that same mentality would just have to continue. Absolutely. And Hertfordshire scoring their 18th goal of the game. It didn't come easy. Lots of hard work, patience, working that ball through. A centre cut through from Bella Bayliss has caused all sorts of problems for this Hertfordshire team. They're going to have to be a lot quicker at sliding back up centre pass defence. Close to a held ball, great pressure, great discipline though, not giving away the second chance opportunity. And good vision there from Hanisha Mohamed with Eliza Barkley's drive through the court. And the defenders doing a good job of bringing this ball through the court for this Hertfordshire team. Uh, giving the attackers a little bit more, not rest, but the opportunity to sit back and do the work that they need to do and great great placement on that ball from Lola Stevens. and that's the consequence right is you move the ball with purpose you reset to the line rather than necessarily having to swing it from side to side so that you spread the Loughborough defensive structure wider and then you get an easier middle route rather than just constantly trying to churn inside the circle and that was critical 30 seconds to go you get an opportunity to cut this lead to three which is very very important Are they time aware though? Are they aware? 
that the clock's running down? Are they locked in? I'm sure they practice these scenarios in training all of the time. Sometimes not knowing. I think I I like where only a number of players on the court know about the clock pressure. There's only nine seconds now, though. Hopefully the person gets the ball and shoots. Three. Ah. Never in doubt. Never in doubt at all. And so going into the end of the first half, Loughborough leading 23 goals to Hertfordshire's 20. The first quarter, a 9 all tie, quite low scoring. So we covered a little bit this quarter. Let's end to end netball. Give us your submarine, Mickey. Yeah, look, a, a much better competitive level in that quarter, I think, from both teams. Much more high scoring. You know, first quarter was 9 all. That one was 14-11 in Loughborough's favour. And I think, to be fair to Hertfordshire, they did incredibly well to stay in that contest and lessen that gap to, to only three because there was in danger at, at some point at the midpoint of that quarter to it blowing out a little bit more. There's so many turnover opportunities for this Hertfordshire defence, though. You know, as we spoke about it before in-game, Eliza Barkley, Jada Autumn, Hanisha Mohamed are working absolutely relentlessly to create multiple turnover opportunities. But at the minute, they've just got to be a lot more direct with how they are trying to get that ball through to their shooting circle. I can see Liberty Burgess taking a bib off. There's going to be a potential change there. For the Loughborough Lightning side, I think they've just been really steady Eddie, to be honest. You know, I think sometimes it's just a little bit of lack of execution on their ball placement that can that can be their own worst enemy, forcing the ball into Emma Thacker on the long. Um, but but their, their centre passer structures overall have been pretty clear with Bella Bayless providing that really short second phase cut. So that's going to be something that this Hertfordshire defence are going to need to stop going forward. And I think that second phase cut is, has been vital for the Loughborough team. But what they're doing really well is creating that space for that second phase shortcut. And so actually having the, I guess, the faith in your teammates to know that if you drive long and hard away from the ball, someone else is going to fill that space and come in. So great, I think, for this Loughborough team. And I, we talked about the players that they have in their team in terms of on the bench. They have a number of go-to players. So what can... What can the Hertfordshire team do to peg the score back? So we said that they're fortunate to be just three goals down. They've had some great opportunities, but been a little bit costly and wasteful. So what, what do Hertfordshire need to do now? Well, if I was them, I would take a, a stern look to their left and that the bib chain that has happened in the Loughborough Lightning uh, bench at this half time. You can see in shot there, you've got Mary Cholhock with a goal shooter bib on, Emma Thacker with a goal attack bib on. So now structurally it changes, doesn't it? Because you know how Loughborough are now going to play is going to be different. It's going to be two circle edge, put the ball in the air so that that aerial contest they're going to hope is going to go in Mary's favour. But, you know, if I'm Hanisha Mohamed, I'm going, bring it on. You know, both Ugandan she crane athletes, both international standard athletes, they know each other inside and out. So if there's anybody who's going to be best fitted to be able to try and wear down that Mary Cholhog, it's definitely going to be Hanisha. But we know Hanisha shoots as well. So maybe she's going to move down the other end. Maybe there's going to be a complete shift and we're just going to try and outscore you. Because how else do you, do you beat a Loughborough side other than trying to match them for goals? Because you're not going to stop them scoring, right? Exactly. And I think, as you say, such variety and options and opportunity for different players. But you mentioned that Hanisha Mohammed, also from Uganda, so knows how Mary Cholhok plays. But Mary Cholhok plies her trade here in the UK and Hanisha Mohammed only just got here. So in terms of meeting each other, they don't necessarily often play each other much in training, despite the fact that they play and represent the same country. So a challenge there. But I'm excited to see what this quarter throws out. But we're just going to take a quick break. Please do not go anywhere. It's Loughborough University 23, Hertfordshire University 20 in the Big Bucks Wednesday Championship Netball Final. You really do your research into the private equity sector. Don't be put off by this kind of mysticism that potentially lies around it. Do your research not only to help with your application and interview process, but also to see if you personally would like to work at that place or that centre or that field.
wildly different is how much responsibility they give to each and every one of us in the business and with that comes a lot of trust. Three months into your training you could be um, running the store on your own, responsible for ordering all the stock, making sure the staff are happy. Aldi really believes that young people can do great things. It's, it's definitely something that excited me and attracted me to the role. I felt really supported at Aldi. From day one you're paired up with your mentor who is with you throughout your whole journey. You develop a really strong network with your peers, you can always pick up the phone to them. But you all work part of a team towards the common goal. I really valued my time in store because I think it's a really important part of you learning the practical day-to-day -day of store operations. It was actually really exciting and I really enjoyed it. It's, it's a change every single day um, and that variety really uh, attracted me to the role. Today is the day when the champions will be crowned in this netball championship final. It's Box Big Wednesday, powered by New Balance. Loughborough, the home team, 23 goals. Plays 20 goals, University of Hertfordshire. There have been a number of changes over the quarter, so we will discuss those as they come. But Mickey, do you want to talk to us about the shooting? Yeah, yeah, I think at the minute it, it's not really painting a picture of the game to be honest probably just showing a little bit how even it is so you know at the minute we had we had Loughborough really high volume pretty accurate Emma Thacker in that quarter 11 out of 11 so she fixed the accuracy issues that she might have had at the start of the game Susie Liverstidge three out of five but we can see there's been a change in the Loughborough shooting circle Susie Liverstidge has moved to wing attack Emma Thacker has gone to goal attack and Mary Cholhock the Ugandan she crane number one goal shooter in the Netball Super League at the moment has come into goal shooter and then for the University of Hertfordshire is Bella Bayliss just takes a little bit of a hard hit there just hoping she's okay a bit ginger to get to her feet maybe a bit of an ankle roll or a calf strain she's a tough cookie she'll flick it off and for Hertfordshire we see Hanisha Mohammed, who was outstanding a goalkeeper now moved to goal shooter and we've got Yaz Hodge England who has moved up to goal attack and Libby Burgess has taken a rest on the bench. So quite a number of changes there for both teams. And how will how will they settle in terms of Hanisha Mohammed? Let's talk about her. Obviously that ball didn't quite make it. She's playing against Jazz Brown who is having an amazing, incredible game. How challenging is it? I used to play goal attack and had to um, change in the same game from goal attack to goalkeeper. How difficult is it to transfer yeah, I mean, mid-game? I've seen her do it before. She did it in the semi-final for, for Leeds and, and that, that was with four minutes to go and the score tied. So it, I, I would say that that move probably was one of the contributing factors which won them the game. But I think they've probably done it because as we saw throughout the first half, that, that Hertfordshire line was just churning an awful lot, wasn't it, for not a lot of gain. And, and it allowed the opportunity for Alex Johnson and Jazz Brown to get their hand to a lot of ball for this Loughborough University side. So I think they've probably done it to try and get a bit of a linchpin inside that circle, more of a stand, hold your ground, make Jazz Brown be attracted to you. And then we go more traditional with a rolling, sweeping goal attack out the front. Doesn't help if you throw the ball away before it gets to you being able to execute that though does it so and that's the thing you need to have the opportunity to put those shots up 
having that patience to work the ball around. But not Great. discounting that Loughborough are applying some incredible pressure defensively. But equally, Hearts doing the same. This ball not smoothly going through court in the hands of the Loughborough team, but patiently working it to Mary Cholhock underneath that post. Yeah, really strong through court defence there from Hertfordshire and that, that just continued from the passage of play beforehand where they, they ended up getting a three second call. That should be a Hertfordshire back line. Great job, Eliza Barkley. It Real was. good captain's tip there, wasn't it? It was and coaches that I used to have used to say add to the ball. So she added to it, which then meant the, the, the Loughborough player that it was intended for couldn't catch it. Good reading the play there. Yes. That's Ron Collymore Lewis. Yeah, really, really controlling herself to pull out of that intercept. And Jazz Brown is fired up, isn't she? Big scream, big hand slap as she gets her hand to another feed. Just think the ball placement's a little bit off for this Hertfordshire front line at the moment. There's there's a lot of backspace they could be sending that ball into. And at the minute they're hanging it in that 50-50 space, which is which is where the contest is going to come from a defender. I always say more is better. You know, shooters can work really hard to keep a ball on court. I can't do anything about fighting the defender if you've undersold it to me. So more is better. Like stretch me, put me on extension. Absolutely. It's better that you're putting giving me a fighting chance as opposed to having me have to fight <laughs> to win that ball in front of me that's falling short really critical centre pass here for this Hertfordshire attack line. Haven't quite settled in this new attacking combination as of yet. And the score is currently 3-0 in this quarter. So big shot from Hanisha Mohammed there. Showing like yourself, Amma, she could do it at both ends. Did you teach her? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no. Say yes. It's Go, Nisha. It wasn't me. Second opportunity comes knocking and the door is opened. Again, that is Eliza Barkley all day, running hard and flat on that drive of the attacker, having absolute no fear. At all, and that great roll there, that movement to put off foot Jazz Brown that Hanisha Mohammed did to drive along the baseline and receive that ball, perfectly timed. Great connection. She's sassy today. Where'd she get that? Is. I hope she brings that to our game on Saturday. Who are you playing on Saturday? We have Team Bath on Saturday at home. So looking forward to be oh. back in at Surrey Sports Park. Great take from Jada Autumn there. Always a backup option for her team. But again, this disconnect in terms of passes not landing, being forced out of court. It's actually quite frustrating. Well, I think what it is, you know, you saw Jada Autumn there have to take a ball under contest on extension. And it's a real skill to be able to control and harness that energy and not let that snowball into the pass that you then give. And what we're seeing at the moment, quite a lot of these errors are coming as a result of what's happened to the person delivering the ball. You know, they have to take a hit, they have to stand up, you know, and then they're, they're so, you know, high in their energy levels that then they just wang the ball a little bit too hard with not enough finesse. And I think that's why it's really important your parts placement and how you deliver the balls to your teammates. So the error might be on the stat sheet in that instance we talked about of Jada Autumn but actually it's the player potentially who parts the ball under that pressure that she didn't quite manage. Another rebound for Jazz Brown. Yeah, and it's that confidence level, isn't it? You know, we see, see saw hearts on that occasion, excuse me, take their ball to centre guard, passing three passes. And it's that, isn't it? Making sure you're finding clean lines. But unfortunately, on that occasion, not being able to convert. And, and unfortunately, when you look down the powerhouse of the attacking line that this Loughborough side have at the moment, between Bella Bayliss, Susie Liverstidge, Emma Thacker, Mary Cholhock, you know, all Super League calibre athletes, they're going to punish you. They really are. And actually, they're punishing it in a very concise way at the moment. So they're not just throwing the ball and launching it to Mary Cholhock at the back. They're doing a really great job. A little tip. Eliza Barkley also doing an incredible defensive job. And a three-second call there from the umpire. But the Loughborough attack end are doing a great job working as a unit. So not just throwing the ball to Mary Cholhock willy-nilly as and when, but Susie Leversidge doing a brilliant job on that circle edge and Emma Thacker working her way in. So they're sharing the load in terms of the, those feeds and in terms of the shots in the circle. Yeah, and changes come here for Hearts as they want to try and stem the flow in this quarter. 
try and stop the score blowing out more than it is at the moment. We see Jada Autumn sliding into that centre position. A little bit more untraditional for Jada, is it? You know, and we've seen her be fantastic in the wing defence position so far for this entire game. And we see Alia Zaranika come onto the court at wing defence. Very well known to us. Plays for Saracens Mavericks. Been a player in and around the Netball Super League for a number of years now. Good tip, Bella Bayliss. And good poise on that feed from Jada Autumn. So she received it. It wasn't meant for her, but she received it in a, a little bit of a frantic way. But she actually stopped, paused, checked what was on offer and chose the correct option. It's that deadly cut we've seen from Bella Bayliss for the entirety of the game. Not going short on that occasion, but just ripping through a back cut. And there's Mary. <laughs> what a rebound. Oh. Great. Well, Eliza Barkley is just in and at everything. She's not giving up. She's keeping this team in in the game. Yeah, she's been fantastic all game long, hasn't she, Eliza? Never gived up, creating multiple turnover opportunities for her team. Great take, Jada Autumn, showing all of her athleticism there. I do feel that Yaz Hodge England's got to get into the circle more, though, because that's what it's creating at the moment. It's just a really big disconnect between goal attack and, and goal shooter and, and Jazz Brown when she's playing as well as she is with the confidence levels at the moment. She's going to be happy to win that one-on-one -on -one battle. So we, you know, we spoke about it all day, haven't we? Have two threats inside that shooting circle. I don't need another feeder. That's what my mid-quarters are for. So you need to offload to the middies and like now, get inside the circle because why is Alex Johnson and Jazz Brown allowed to sit inside Double. the circle together? completely so there should have been a Hertfordshire player completely free as you said and that's when you needed Hodge England to drive in so drive in late when the focus is on you on you when the opposition have dropped onto that double just add to it I chaos. said earlier chaos if you can't intercept the ball just add to it <laughs> and that's exactly what Susie Liversidge did I feel sorry for these middies. Their, their thighs and lungs must be absolutely burning at this stage because I don't think that ball just came out of the centre third for the last minute and a half. That's a lot of energy to expel and, and Loughborough come out the, the better of it. And that was on a Hertfordshire centre pass. So they now get an opportunity to double up. And if they score this, the margin in a blink of an eye has blown to 10. Held ball, the shell in that goalkeeper position, Vichelle Robinson shows her impact. Might not win the heart advantage, but she had the heart advantage on that one, didn't she? She really did. And just as a reminder, our two umpires controlling the game, Joe Paddock and Emma Parker. We couldn't play without them. No, and I think that they've, they've managed the game incredibly well. Biggest compliment you could ever play on umpires that you haven't really noticed them. You know, and, and I think that, that that's how this game has gone. You know, high quality, players been able to get on with it. Defenders have been allowed to contest the ball. You know, and I, and I think pretty fair and even across both sides, which is, which is exactly what you want, isn't it? Absolutely great skill there from... Great skill from Jada Autumn, but a rush of blood to the head. So she did a really good job of keeping possession of that ball and then just willy-nilly throws it in a hospital pass to Mohammed under the post. Well, I think I think she thought she was going to get called for replay. So as soon as she caught the ball, it's almost like oh, I've got to get rid of it before the decision comes. But that's when the opportunity for Jazz to eat the ball alive inside the circle is coming. It's only going to add to the frustration, you know, of, of someone like a Hanisha Mohammed who, who can hold incredibly well inside that circle. And Mathaka doing well to control her feet there. Much more measured approach to goal. Splitting the defensive circle in two. that margin now sits at 10. Great drive there from Lola Stevens. I was actually thinking she's gone a bit quiet, but brilliant job there to draw her defender, Saffron Colomu Lewis, up into the, um, set towards the centre third and get the ball close to the circle edge. Jazz Brown did have a look at it, so I imagine next time we might see her coming for one of those. Yeah, and a really fantastic turnover here for Hertfordshire. Got to do something with it though. Fantastic take from Zara Nika. Oh, no. Every single time. And the attacking contact thoughts there. But again, you talked about balls falling short. So 
also cross court. That ball was never going to be on in terms of the distance it had to travel, the angle that it was on, and then also how short it was. So frustrating for the top Fisher team because essentially they just needed to score their own and then start to see where they could win other opportunities to pull this game back. Both teams getting a little bit ragged now. You can see them only having one lead to the ball. We always say, don't we, got to have two options, got to have two options. And being behind a defender three channels away is, is probably not the, the best option to provide as Safi Collingmore Lewis there is unlucky to go offside and, and, and have that ball pulled back. But again, not really a clear option to the ball, is it? Everything's behind and away. Really, and lifted. So this Hartfisher team lifting the ball constantly and playing into the hands of the lot of defenders. They're really aerial players, very good in the air, very good at reading play. If the ball sits in the air, they have enough time to read it and get their feet to that ball. And there's the difference, right? You see a Susie Livestitch punch up the court, don't get used, but Emma Thacker comes right up behind her and just fills in the gap. And then they get a really easy, nice transition route through to circle. So repercussive timing of options, but having two options to choose from as a ball carrier is incredibly important as we see more changes happen, but for both teams at this point. So Ellie Oswick coming back on the court. Here, Lola Stevens moving back to a centre position. Jada Autumn taking a well-earned rest. Safi Collingmore Lewis going to the bench for Loughborough University, just waiting confirmation of the change to come through. Lots of changes, but 10 goals, the difference now. Loughborough leading 36 goals to University of Hertfordshire's 26. And they're just not landing now. Yeah, and to confirm, that's Catherine Fisher who's just entered the court for Loughborough University. Just clearly wanted to keep, keep piling on that pressure, keep the scoreboard churning over. Yeah, and also I think giving people opportunity, you've made it this far through the season with a number of players, so you don't always have your Super League players available to you in, in a team and throughout the season. So a number of players here and also who maybe didn't get selected for this game who have worked really hard every Wednesday, traveling as well alongside their university um, timetable to get the team to its final. So rewarding some of those players now, irrespective of having Super League players on your roster. Good take under all sorts of pressure there from Lola Stevens. Bella Bayless thought she could probably nick that one, running hard. On the flat. Oh, bringing out all of the tricks now, aren't we? We are. And Mickey, could you tell us a little bit about, so we've seen um, both teams have some Super League players in their team. All the Super League players didn't start the game. So tell us a little bit about why some of the Super League players wouldn't be on court all the time, because you want your best team out there, don't you? You want to win. Yeah, I, I, think it, I think it just depends. There could be all sorts of performance-related reasons, maybe limited on, on how much they've trained this week, you know, illness, injury, all sorts of stuff goes on behind the scenes that, you know, we just have no concept of. Also, you know, these guys are, are competing in a, a, a Bucks final in, in the middle of a Super League season. So, you know, there's probably some form of management of minutes going on in terms of what players can play and contribute. Um, you know, Loughborough Lightning got a big game this weekend against the Manchester Thunder side and, and I could go through the entire list about seven stars and, um, you know, Saracens Mavericks and, and the other teams as well in and around the league, Surrey Storm, etc, etc. So, look, I, I think that, that that's the beauty as Eliza Barkley comes out with another phenomenal interception there. That's the beauty of having a squad, right? And, and a wider team and a, and a built squad on 12 players who could actually do a job for you. And at the end of the third quarter, Slightly pushed out to 11 goals. Loughborough leading 38 goals to University of Hertfordshire's 27. So a 14-7 score that quarter. So Loughborough, dominant, confident, taking the game forwards. Yeah, and also really consistent in their scoring. We see them score 14 goals in the second quarter and then they back that up again with another 14 in the second. Where if you, if you look at Hertfordshire, conversely, they scored 11 in that second quarter, only seven in that quarter. And unfortunately, you, you just got to have a higher volume. Now, we probably knew that was going to be the case, such as were the changes that were made at half-time. But still, I think probably what will be disappointing this Hertfordshire side at the moment is the execution or the lack of. They've had so much ball. Eliza Barkley has been 
outstanding for this Hertfordshire University side at goal defence. She has been in and around everything, providing multiple opportunities for her team, even though they're down on the scoreboard. And at the minute, the attack end have just been far too wasteful with the ball that they're giving, underselling feeds, not putting feed in the right placement, being off balance and lacking patience. And, and those are the sort of things that, as a coach, you just have steam coming out of your head, don't you? Because, you know, we need to be smarter than that, particularly when the score is, is not going our way against a team that are going to punish us at the minute. And Loughborough have just been quietly going about their business. Two options to the ball, crafting the ball to circle edge. You can see it, Susie Liverstidge, Bella Bayless on the circle edge, faking the ball, waiting for the defenders to commit and citing both options inside the circle. And that has been a real marked difference in the two squads. Definitely a marked difference. And that ability to have several options to the ball and I think have a Mary Cholhock come on the court and you look, don't necessarily realise it's Mary Cholhock in terms of they're not getting the ball first place on centre pass and turning and sending in a really long a long ball. I think Mary Cholhock has significantly impacted the rebounds as she got every single one but I think that's what I like about the Liverpool team that they have that variety of play in their attack end that they're still just working it round patiently. Is it possible for University of Hertfordshire to make a comeback? Well, I, th I think they have to believe so because what they're doing here otherwise, you know, a lot can happen in 15 minutes and they've been winning enough ball, regardless of the combination that's been on the court, they've been winning enough ball to make this game competitive and they don't have to think, OK, we need to claw back this whole margin in, in five minutes. They need to think we need to make this competitive. You know, we need to put pressure on this Lufthansa team. We need to get momentum back in our favour because as we've seen throughout the whole game, the Lufthansa team can make errors as well if you put them under pressure. So it's just about that you know they've got to think one goal at a time one centre pass at a time one turnover at a time and don't look any further ahead than that because we must execute now if we're going to start making inroads but they have to believe that it's still possible because otherwise what are you going to do you know what's your other alternative exactly you better believe it they have to make inroads stick with us we are here at the netball championship box final we're going to take a short break we'll be back with the final quarter in a few moments There is one more quarter to go in this Box Big Wednesday Netball Final Championship. Loughborough leading, Hertfordshire, a little work to do. Can they claw back these 11 goals in this 15 minutes? Once again alongside me, Mickey Austin, Head of Performance Netball at Surrey Storm and player. <laughs> Should add that little bit on the end there. I know, selfish. <laughs> Scan in the court here for any changes. You can see for Hertfordshire, Pippa Dixon has entered the court at goal attack. So just trying to make sure that they steady that attack line. But unfortunately, Lola Stevens falling guilty of, of looking long when there's two defenders inside the circle and, and Loughborough start the quarter, essentially where they left off at the end of the third, which is dominant. Eliza Barkley. Oh, I thought from the umpire running, I thought they was going to go with her then. But unfortunately, not on that occasion. Still battling away, though. And Robinson doing her best to impact on that shot. But Emma Thacker just too confident. Yeah, and it brings up the 40 goals for, for Loughborough. So Hearts will be looking to ensure they score off this one. Really great approach. Nice and direct to that circle. And that's a great entry to the circle from Pippa Dixon. Unlucky. It is, and it's really important when you're shooter is shooting that you get yourself into a, a really good, strong rebound position. Obviously, the ball could fall off the post anyway, but in that situation there, Hanisha Mohammed not in a reasonable position as I would have expected. Lovely play from Emma Thacker. Drove into the net, popped back to receive the ball and without even stopping her drive, fed the ball to the circle edge and drove into the circle. Poetic. Oh, 
How lovely. I'd love to be described as poetic. How would we describe your play? Oh, no comment. <laughs> <laughs> we'll leave. It's a box we're, final, we're, so we'll leave Super League to Super League. Please do not tweet me and tell me <laughs> your suggestions. <laughs> yeah, we don't want your suggestions. Keep them to yourself. <laughs> but we do like you to message and share your positivity. And hopefully we are grateful that you've joined us for this Box Big, Big Wednesday Netball Championship final. Mickey was grimacing because she could read that a mile up that Jazz Brown too had read it and came in comfortably to win that interception. Yeah, we just speak about bare basics of attacking, don't we? Like you've got to be able to turn fully. You've got to be able to look down the court so that you at least shift that defensive structure so that you can use the wide. Unfortunately, on that occasion, only turning and looking halfway across the court. And Jazz Brown had eyes from that from early doors. She's been outstanding today, hasn't she? She has been phenomenal. I think bringing that play that she's had in Super League, and she's just grown this season. Um, only five matches into the Super League season, but she's just really dominating. She's playing like a woman possessed, possessed with incredible talent, athleticism, Footwork. She's able to move comfortably around any shooter and any um, any goal attack that comes into that circle. Yeah, great potential as well. And, and as we know, you know England England netball at the moment are probably looking for defenders. So if I was Jazz Brown, I'd be working as hard as I can to, to put, make my name really difficult to, to miss out on that futures list or some form of, of roses. Completely in England. Jess is watching. Looking for, looking for defenders, as you say, and specifically keepers. There are a number chomping at the bit to have that opportunity, but definitely I would have Jazz Brown. You want competition, online. right? You want multiple players coming through year on year, different ages and stages. That's the point, right? Exactly. And that's why we have a pathway. So that's why we know a number of these players are playing in various pathways for different teams. And I think it's interesting the um, the number of teams that uh, Loughborough have to contend with. So players playing in three different Super League franchises and then on top of that, different um, Super League pathways. So quite challenging to bring players together to combine well, but they're doing it so far. Fan Rob fantastic footwork there from Fischel Robinson, causing Mary Chalhock all sorts of problems, getting her feet going, confusing the space. Oh. From what was a really great build-up play, but unfortunately there just can't make it play. A little bit of frustration starting to show. Got to find steady heads. There's still 10 minutes left in this game, and, and they've actually done really well to, to try and stay competitive. 6-3 quarter score currently at the moment, but... Loughborough University just... Plugging away for Shell Robinson again. Really unlucky. Very unlucky. She did a really good job trying to keep Mary Chalkock out of that circle. She was just pegged back, potentially looking for an unpassed call, which didn't come, but still contested the ball. And that's what I like. Players that are striving to achieve, they don't necessarily get the call that they think they're going to get, but they still continue to do the work that they need to do. A great take there from Hanisha Mohammed. Oh, did you hold your breath while that ball landed? Because I definitely did. Very lucky to get through that tiny gap. Alex Johnson and, and Jazz, Jazz Brown have been all over that. Jazz Brown still has energy to be performing multiple jumps on the shot. Plyos, bonus plyos. <laughs> and a breaking call. How can this Hertfordshire team secure an attempt at goal with this ball? I think it's about making sure they're doing the work off of the ball. You know, you saw that set up there. You had two or three attackers going from a static position, one drive, hoping that's going to be enough to ditch the defender. And it just isn't. So that preparation work, unlucky Pippa Dixon. That preparation work, that's unlucky. That coaches talk about all the time from the sideline. Are you preparing on, on your defender? And what that essentially means is, are you doing some pre-movement before the ball carrier even wants to give you the ball so that that bit is the easy bit. And if you're not, then receiving the ball is going to be hard. And this Loughborough team have, have shown the entirety of the game, unlucky to not get a held ball call there, that they will be dogged at running hard on your shoulder. And they've had great joy from it. Beautiful cut, Lola Stevens, but just nothing coming forward for her. And even the backup now is offline and behind. So the wheels really are starting to fall off a little bit. 
they are. It's like the Hartfordshire team trying their best, striving to try and pick up the ball. Nothing that had to be out of be court, falling. right? <laughs> Not much falling their way, but you talked about having availability when the person needs to release the ball. So doing that work ahead of time and the Hertfordshire team started really well in terms of creating that space, doing offline movement to receive the ball in space. But now as the game's gone on, not necessarily doing the same. As a giant roar goes up for Mary Cholhock stepping off the court from that goal shoot position. Yeah, we'll await confirmation of those changes, but I'm pretty certain it's Tilly Irvine that's come onto the court at goalkeeper for this heart side and coming onto the court for Loughborough University, Sophie Eggbarren. Just scanning across the benches now, I'm pretty certain that means both teams Everybody. have got close to using their entire bench. Absolutely. Massive cheer on the crowd for Sophie as she gets her first goal after coming straight onto the court. If we just look at this Hertfordshire attack line here, good drive from Liberty Burgess, but again, just that one option to the ball and delaying giving that ball into Hanisha Mohamed under lots of contest. Get to take that shot back with a penalty though. <laughs> she sinks it this time. It's just six and a half minutes to go in this game. Loughborough leading 43, University of Hertfordshire 33. Loughborough leading 47, University of Hertfordshire 33. Just watching Susie Liverstidge work great right outside the circle. I think she's been a real silent assassin for this Loughborough University side today. She's worked relentlessly, providing multiple options and, and been really calm in a wing attack position as well, which, which is not her first choice position, but something we've definitely seen her play more and more. It's a replay call, unfortunately, there. And you've mentioned quite a number of players in terms of being instrumental. And I guess for this look for a team, their whole team and whole squad has been instrumental. They've made changes and they've been relatively seamless. People have come on into different positions. As the crowd cheers, Jazz Brown has had an incredible, amazing game and she leaves the court. Yeah, there's some MVP chants in the crowd going off and I'm, I'm quite inclined to agree with them, to be honest. But we see Megan Allen enter the court at goalkeeper now. So it'll be interesting to see how this Hearts team expose that and if they do notice that they should be exposing that. As Tanisha Mohamed slots that one away. For a goalkeeper, goal shooter, not bad. She was 100% in that third quarter, seven out of seven. Just that volume, isn't it? We want that volume to be higher. Absolutely. And Egg Barron working that ball, a beautiful split, gets herself closer to the post. Again, Hertfordshire just lifting the ball a little bit too much for my liking. When they play it flat, when they do that pre-work, they're capable of taking it through court comfortably. But Megan Allen's come on and brilliantly, brilliant work there, coming round the back and intercepting the ball. So. She says, anything Jazz Brown can do, I too can do. Yeah, and such is the strength of the squad. That's what it's about, right? Rolling one player off, rolling player one player on, and you don't even notice the change because they can do the same job. They can facilitate a similar role and, and have the same strengths, which, which is a credit to, to Josie and the work that I'm sure she, she's done relentlessly across the season and, and probably over the years for some of these athletes with this team. Now this is when they get a chance to maybe relax a little bit and, and enjoy and soak up what is to be the last four minutes of what has been a really consistent performance across the board from this Loughborough University side. It really has. And one more change from Loughborough. So Bella Bailitz, another player we've talked about. We've mentioned her name significantly throughout the game. She's been wonderful for this Loughborough team. She takes to the bench. 
and is replaced. with Georgie Brock Taylor. Georgie started the game at wing attack. So lots of interchange from the Loughborough team, but able to soak up and absorb those changes and still do the job, still execute the game plan. And I think potentially the fact that a number of them play for different franchises and have to come together and play Felix Uni probably has helped in that respect in terms of the changes that they've had to make and adapting to whoever is on court and when they're on court. I think throughout the season, being able to switch off from whatever they're doing in separate franchises or in different pathways and pulling that together for this team, I think must have stood them in good stead today. Yeah, and it's also that ability for, for, you know, Bucks netball when you are playing Super League and you are playing pathway netball, you know, there has to be an element of enjoyment. This has to be your fun stuff. <laughs> You know, Fun. <laughs> you know <laughs> how, how dare I say it, but, you know, studies are hard and training's hard and, you know, competitive Super League netball when there's so much at stake is hard. So when you're coming together for university training, you know, I'll know as someone who did it for three years, it's the best time. You create the best memories and the socials and the coach journeys and the changing rooms and the TikToks, you know, all of the stuff that really tells the story. So, uh, you know, I think that that's really critical is that piece. And I think you, you get the best out of these athletes when they can turn up and flourish. You know, they give the, you the best version of themselves. And I think we've really seen that across the board for this Loughborough University side, you know, multiple people that have really put their hand up for, for POM performances. Emma Thacker's been brilliant. Susie Liverstage been outstanding. Bella Bayliss, you know, the list goes on and on. Alex Johnson has been unbelievable in that goal defence position. And they just continue to punish on that scoreboard. The list does just go on and on. Plenty of players stepping up. Emma Thacker defensively. I think she might be leading the Loughborough team for interceptions. Although there was obviously, as you say, Jazz Brown and Alex Johnson. But just a really great work rate. So tall as well. And when you're and on that line trying to reset, so difficult range. to see the option around what is incredible range. Exactly. But you need to position yourself in the right place to use that range. And Emma Thacker has done that very well. That was a lovely passage of play from Hertfordshire. They're, they're not going down without a fight and they're still trying to find a way to execute their structures. Beautiful it clear did. lines to ball. Unlucky Aliyah Zaranika on that occasion. Lydia Harrison being really strong to take that ball on the circle edge. She's entered the game well in this fourth quarter. And so thinking about player of the match, we've mentioned a number of names throughout this game for both teams. I want to make a special mention for Eliza Barkley. She has had an exceptional game at goal defence for Hertfordshire. Agreed. But who do we think is going to be our player of the match for this championship final? Well, I think that, you know, as, as we just mentioned there, that there's been a lot of contenders across the court, some really solid performances. I think Eliza Barkley, as you mentioned, has been outstanding. I, I actually think Alex Johnson as well in this Loughborough Lightning defensive yeah. unit has done a lot of the groundwork. But for me, I don't think I can overlook that lady, Jazz Brown, who's been unbelievable in that goalkeeper position, up and about, bit between her teeth. And for me, she would get the player of the match today. I agree completely. She's been absolutely amazing. As the umpires hold time, there is just 12 seconds to go on this final. The Loughborough Branch are already on their feet. They know that they've done enough and this championship final is theirs. Can they score one more goal with just eight seconds to go? The ball launched in. A penalty is called with three seconds to go. And it's not going to land. But you have your champions. It's the home side. The crowd go wild for Loughborough Lightning as they win this Bucks Big Wednesday Netball Championship final. 56 goals to Hertfordshire's 37. And what a game. We said it would be promising. We said it would be exciting. And it was for a significant portion of that game, Mickey. Yeah, fantastic game. Credit all to Loughborough University and the fantastic, consistent performance that they've put out on, on show today. You know, incredibly consistent. They won the last three quarters, drew the first, didn't really drop off the ball the whole day. And as you can see them there to the right of your picture, absolutely jubilant Loughborough University squad with their 
fearless performance today and multiple player of the matches performances and I guess that's 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 the the key to a, a great team performance isn't it is that you all play well enough to put yourself forward Hertfordshire will, will be sad they, they knew the challenge coming in today was going to be really hard and I, and I think they, they that score doesn't really do the justice of the competitiveness of the game did it particularly from the defenders Jada Autumn Eliza Barkley Hanisha Mohammed in that goalkeeper position they started the game absolutely on fire just couldn't make it pay in their attacking end today and they tried everything you know Mel Mansfield threw so many different changes at it but just nothing stuck for them today but can be incredibly proud to make another final nonetheless absolutely seven finals in 10 years that is amazing we talked about University of Hertfordshire not being one of the powerhouse netball sporting universities but they've done an amazing amazing job to focus and harness the talent that they have and work this netball program so commiserations to the Hertfordshire team the Loughborough team they worked tirelessly you said it was a team performance and they had that grit they had that determination and they go home as victors 2017 was the last time these two teams met in a final on that occasion it was Loughborough that took the spoils and once again in this box big went big Wednesday netball championship final 2024 once again Loughborough are the victors 56 goals to 37. Thank you for joining us. Stay with us. After this advert, we will have Mickey Austin courtside having a discussion with the coaches and the player of the match, and then we will have your trophy presentation. having a mentor especially so early on in our careers is that you have an outside perspective and like a go-to person that you can go and ask any questions regarding a situation or your career path. Having a mentor at ICG has really helped me by giving me a perspective of the company as well as my own personal improvement from a outsider's perspective so I'm able to see and get different feedback of my own progress from someone outside of my team. Aldi different is how much responsibility they give to each and every one of us in the business and with that comes a lot of trust. Three months into your training you could be uh, running the store on your own responsible for ordering all the stock making sure the staff are happy. Aldi really believes that young people can do great things. It's, it's definitely something that excited me and attracted me to the role. I felt really supported at Aldi from day one you're paired up with your mentor who is with you throughout your whole journey. You develop a really strong network with your peers, you can always pick up the phone to them. But you all work part of a team towards the common goal. I really valued my time in store because I think it's a really important part of you learning the practical day-to-day -day of store operations. It's actually really exciting and I really enjoyed it. It's, it's a change every single day um, and that variety really uh, attracted me to the role.
that the netball champions were crowned. Loughborough, the team that take the victory today, 56 goals to 37 against a rallying University of Hertfordshire team. They fought hard. The first quarter was nine all. It was an intense battle, but Loughborough just confident, steady play. They had so many options in terms of their bench, but also on the court, they had the ability to have several options and several opportunities available to play that ball to. Mary Cholhock, Ugandan international and Loughborough Lightning player came onto the court briefly, but the other Super League players for that franchise played well and they were incredible. So we are just going to go to the trophy presentation before we head into the interviews. Congratulations once again to Loughborough University. Before we award our medals to our players, we do need to thank our officials. So please join me in putting your hands together for our team of officials. Joe Panek and Emma Parker, Reserve Emma Walker. And table officials, it's going to include you as well. If you'd like to head up to collect your medals. Fran Atkinson, Donna Fenson, Wendy Broad, Robin Rogers, Jane Bell, Sarah Bostock, Joe Ball, and Rachel Start. And we also have a special thank you to our tournament director, M. Harvey. Before we give away the silver and the gold medals, it is time to award the player of the match. The player is from Loughborough University. And it is goalkeeper Jasmine Brown. Congratulations, Jasmine. Now it takes two teams to make a final as good as that. One of the most engrossing games in Apple I have watched in a long time. Let's hear it for your runners up, the University of Hertfordshire. Ladies, if you'd like to come up when I call your name to receive your medal, starting with Eliza Barkley, Jada Orton, Libby Burgess, Ella Courtney, Pippa Dixon. Hodge England, Tilly Irvine, Anisha Muhammad, Ellie Ozick, Michelle Robinson, Lola Stevens. And let's hear it for the Hearts coaching team led by head coach Mel Mansfield. What a fabulous final, what a fabulous run they've had. Let's hear it for your Bucks National Championship silver medalist, University of Hertfordshire. Your Bucks and National Champions, 
and about to receive their gold medals. Put your hands together for Loughborough University. First, Megan Allen. Bella Bayliss. Georgie Brock Taylor. Your MVP, Jasmine Brown. Mary Chollock. Sophie Eckbray. Catherine Fisher. Lydia Harrison. Johnson, <laughs> Saffron Lewis Collymore, <laughs> Emma Thacker, <laughs> and University of Loughborough's captain, Susie Levisage. <laughs> Let's hear it then, folks, for your Bucks National Champions 2024. They are University of Loughborough!
Well, Jazz Brown, player of the match today, outstanding performance. Let's talk about the game first. Summarise before the game, how difficult did you know this challenge was going to be? And are you really, really proud of the team's performance after that scoreline? Um, no game's easy and I think that's the beauty of this league. Uh, yeah, we had to work really hard and yeah, I'm so proud of the girls to get through that. Um, especially the first half, it was, it was proper graft and yeah, I'm really proud of the girls to get over the line. Okay, let's talk about you then. Unbelievable performance today. So much confidence exuding literally out of you. I love the way that you're such the energizer of this team. So talk to me about the confidence that they give you and the, the partnership really of you and Alex in front of you, which I thought today was phenomenal. Yeah, I mean, this has been years in the making as well. So yeah, they, they give me loads of confidence and give, allow me to fly out and do my thing. And that's the beauty of this team. Yeah, so happy with them. Yeah, and in terms of you, development this year, going from strength to strength, multiple opportunities at NSL, now obviously carrying that form over into Bucks as well for, for a Loughborough University side. So, so what's next? Where's the ambition? Where do you want to go? Uh, at the minute, I'm just enjoying Super League. I know this is my first season at Super League, so yeah, I'm just trying to get that under my belt. You never know, I might hit that ball at the end of all that. So we'll see, we'll see. But no, just trying to get to the end of that and we'll see what opportunities I get. Well, we sincerely hope you don't hate netball. Enjoy the medal and enjoy what I'm sure is to be a fun evening for you guys. Go and celebrate with us, your team. Congratulations. Right. Shout out to my grandma from Australia. Josie, firstly, congratulations. You must be so, so pleased. Talk me through bench management, how you manage your emotions through that game and super professional performance for, from your full squad today. Yeah, firstly, obviously absolutely ecstatic. Um, the girls have been phenomenal all season. And yeah, I think the one good thing about this squad is we've got so much strength and depth. And as you say, bench management was really important today. We knew Hearts were going to throw different things at us. We had to adapt, but we also knew that we had the talent on the bench to be able to bring on. Yeah, and it was that tactical battle that I really enjoyed. End of first quarter, 9-0, low scoring, edgy, and you kept the seven the same. So what sort of instruction did you give them as the game went on to be able to dominate that scoreline? You know, 14 goals, quarter two, 14, 14 goals, quarter three, and so on into that last. Yeah, I think in particular defensively, you know, they were really using a rotation. They were exiting really well. We had to be really smart with whether we're challenging the rundown or whether they were loose enough to challenge the pocket. So we just played around with that. That enabled us to win a little bit more ball. And I think down the attack end is actually keeping Emma in the circle, getting Susie in, starting to split that defence, make them switch and then get on the mismatch. And I thought the girls executed it excellently. Yeah, I mean, obviously got to be so proud and pleased for Jazz Brown coming out of player of the match today. We'll talk about her in a second. A couple of other key key players out there for you today as well. Just a word on Bella Bayliss, Alex Johnson, Susie Liverstead, who are potentially more of the unsung heroes of, of the team, but I thought were also outstanding consistently today. 